We're going to get started in just a minute here. All right, good evening, everyone. I'm Sarah Proviance, a college counselor from Colorado Academy. On behalf of the Rocky Mountain College Night Planning Committee um, with um, schools from Aspen High School, CA, Dawson, Fountain Valley School, Kent Denver, Peak to Peak Charter School, and the Colorado Springs School, uh, we want to welcome you to the session on understanding test optional policies. Uh, tonight, we are thrilled to have with us Zach Evans from University of Chicago, David Stein from TCU, Morgan Weirkamp from Wake Forest, and Mark Dudley from Duke University. So I'm going to turn things over to Zach Evans, who's going to be our moderator for tonight. And feel free also to throw in questions to the Q&A, and we'll try to get to them if possible. Thank you so much, Sarah, and good evening and welcome. And thank you all for joining us to learn more about the test optional admissions process, what it means, and to hear some answers to some frequently asked questions uh, from several admissions officers that you've, as you heard just introduced, representing a variety, a variety of institutions. I'm Zach Evans, Deputy Director of Admissions at the University of Chicago. And to give you kind of a, a brief overview of, of, of uh, the, the playing field here, you know, standardized testing has always kind of been the elephant in the room within the college admissions process. Um, but selective schools, like all of us here, we practice holistic admissions. So every part of the application is important. Um, this includes your extracurricular involvement, essays and how you present yourself and your voice, letters of recommendation potentially, and of course your high school transcript. But of course, uh, beyond that, um, students, some institutions, parents certainly have, have also kind of really hyper-focused in on the single factor, factor, which is test scores, ACT and SAT specifically. But for over 50 years, institutions have been moving towards uh, policies that re don't require testing as part of the application. So starting with uh, schools like Bowdoin in the 1960s, Bates in the 1980s, and up to uh, 2019, we had about 1,000 institutions nationally that had a test optional policy. Now, last year, of course, testing centers were shuttered nationwide as the pandemic uh, uh, started uh, and, and has kept going. And so institutions quickly jumped uh, into creating test optional policies. So we saw hundreds and hundreds more join, which is why this type of session is even more important than ever as we continue to see uh, uh, schools not moving back um, to requiring testing or changing their policies over, over time. So. One of the things, uh, you know, thinking about that contextual history, though, but one of the things I hope we get out of tonight is understanding that test optional really means test optional. U Chicago went test optional a couple of years ago. This past year, we saw a jump from about 10% of our applicant pool um, applying without testing to closer to 35 and, and actually maybe a little bit more than that, 35% of our pool applying without test scores. And this fall, we're expecting about a fourth of our class to come in. Um, not having had testing as part of their application. So we're seeing this, this growing um, in our own pool at UChicago, and that's where we're at right now. So I do wanna invite our panelists to introduce themselves and, and, and tell a little bit about them, themselves and their institutions. And I'm gonna invite Mark Dudley to kick us off there. Well, hey, good evening, everybody. It's great to be with you tonight. My name is Mark Dudley and I'm the Duke guy. Uh, I am the Colorado rep and it's uh, a great topic of conversation having. Again, I, I represent Duke University and you know, just to focus on test optional nature, we required testing up until this year. And it was a very interesting year and I'm looking forward to sharing some of what we learned tonight. And we have announced that moving forward, we're gonna remain test optional. Uh, so um, again, we'll focus on a lot of these topics, but it's uh, great to see everybody tonight. I look forward to the conversation and thanks for having us. Morgan. I was in the background, Mark, just going, <sighs> when you said you guys are going to remain test optional. Um, so hello, everybody. My name is Morgan Workcamp. I'm an assistant dean here at Wake Forest University. And like Evan says, test optional policies are not new by any means. Um, Bowdoin, like you said, I've been doing it for a long time. Us at Wake are by no means the first college to go test optional. Uh, that being said, we've been doing this for a little over a decade, so we kind of like to think of ourselves as pioneers in this area. We were, uh, I think, the, the, first, the first university of the top 30 universities to go test optional in 2008, and so I'm just excited to share more on that. Uh, this year, we saw 60% of our applicant pool was test optional, and so I'm just excited to talk with colleagues, what does this mean for the changing landscape in the coming years, so... 
and David. Hey, y'all from TCU down here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, similar to Duke, we were we required tests until last year when we started going test optional. And uh, I think in a similar vein, it's something that we were we always had holistic review and always kind of, I would say, even minimize test scores in the process. But this kind of gave us the push to finally go test optional in this year's class. Uh, we were about 55 percent test optional that, that didn't submit the test score. And it was really interesting, I think, too, how how different it was regionally. Um, here in Texas, about 70% still gave a test. I think more testing centers were open. In California, only about 10% of our students sent a test score because they, they couldn't take them. So it was really interesting to just see the effect on, uh, on, on COVID and, again, all these shuttered testing centers. So that's going to be really interesting, too. Uh, and we are test optional moving forward as well. Exciting. So you're, we're all in, in good company here as we think towards the future of, of what test optional means. And so I'm going to pose the first question to, to Mark to kind of think of, uh, at, at a pretty high level and to not necessarily focus too much on the pandemic, but just kind of thinking, why has test optional been, been something that we feel is, has been growing even for, for, again, 50 years? And what benefits exist for institutions and students because of a test optional policy they, that we might have? It's a great question to start with, and I'll provide some insight. I welcome others to join. Uh, I think it's important to talk about why these tests to begin with. You know, why, why did we develop the, or not us, why, why did they develop standardized testing those many decades ago? And, you know, just looking at a quick count, there are 641 high schools in Colorado. Don't worry, I Googled it. And there are about 24,000 high schools around the country and, and many tens of thousands around the world. Different standards of curriculum, different standards of rigor and assessment and graduation requirements. So the idea really became that we wanted to have a standardized option where we could have a single way to assess a student coming from Colorado as a student coming from the United Kingdom and, and every type of institution imaginable. So they really developed as a way to have some entrance data for a very large and increasingly growing applicant pool. And as you've seen applicant pools that many institutions grow by leaps and bounds over the years, it's become a, a very solid part of a college admissions process. On the back end, we also saw lots of really helpful information. It was not just about assessing students among the pool, but if you would actually look at a lot of the correlates between students' standardized test scores and then their college GPA, for, for many decades, the data would show that there was robustness to that, that there was a strong predictive value. So as the applicant pools became larger and more competitive, colleges were really focused on making sure that the students would have success. Now, fast forward, you know, in the past few decades, we've had more institutions starting to speak up and say that this is not a part of the process they would like to have for various reasons. You know, for many students, it is a limiting factor. Some students don't test well. We know that there are inherent biases that are written into the tests themselves, but also into the process of testing. Accessibility is an issue. Cost is an issue. Time is an issue. We also know that for many students, they were able to have access to counselors and prep services, and that was not widely available. So for many of these reasons and many others, some institutions began to say, you know, this is not a part of the process we want to officially have. And they conducted these admissions rounds and found that they were having success. They were still admitting very smart, very impactful, very driven students, and that solidified the decision for many to remain test optional. Obviously, what's going on right now is this big increase because of this pandemic environment. But even without the pandemic, it was likely that this is the track that we were going on. It's just that things have really been kicked into high gear. So when it comes to moving forward, you know, many institutions are going to perhaps revert back to tests required. I, I suspect we'll find that many are going to remain test optional because from our end, we actually saw that it did fulfill a lot of institutional needs. I mean, we saw a significant uh, large pool, significantly larger pool. We saw the number of applications rise. And it's not just about trying to get more students to apply. It's also the broadening of the pool. You know, we just conducted our process and released decisions last night. We saw more applications from students in places we don't often see. So this was a barrier for a lot of students to be able to even apply to an institution, let alone attend. So when we looked at the, the students that we were getting, where they were coming from, the backgrounds, perspectives, the interests that they had, we saw a very robust, talented, and exciting applicant pool, perhaps the most we've ever seen. So that was our reason for going. Now, looking at our applicant pool, I, I neglected to mention at first, about half of students this year who applied did so with testing and about half without. 
So I imagine it'll still remain an option because for a lot of students, they want this to be a part of their process. They would like this to be a part of their application. They know that they test well. They think that this is something that reflects their abilities and the strengths and the contributions that they can make. So that's why many institutions are still gonna be offering it as an availability. So we're really letting the students make that decision. If this is something that a student would like to have, then it's there for them. And if this is something that a student would rather not do or is unable to access or does not have the time or opportunity to take advantage of, that's perfectly fine as well. So with many things in higher ed, it's gonna be really interesting to see what the coming weeks, months, and years will look like. So stay tuned. I'm sure we'll communicate all of that. Uh, but for our juniors here in the room tonight, it sounds like if you're interested in any of these four colleges, the decision is 100% yours to make. David and Morgan, did you want to add into that at all? Gosh, I, I feel like, Mark, you, you set it up so well. I feel like there's not a lot more, truthfully, I can say other than I think like anything that happens within cultural narratives, I think that the testing question, we were going to get here, like you said, we were eventually going to get here. But in some ways, COVID has made us finally get to get get here together and have this conversation. Because as we know, we get emails all the time about from students about being test optional and what that means. And that's because the stories they're hearing are different from colleges, from counselors, from parents. And I think it's exciting to think how we can all start telling a new story and we have permission to do that now in supporting people, like you said, and making their own choices. And so it's a it's a one of those byproducts, I think, of a really, really difficult year um, that we've all been talking about this past year. So that's, I think that's all, all I really have to say to just echo what, what Mark has already said. Fantastic. And, and, I'll, and the one piece I'll, I'll add is as an admissions officer, one of the reasons I love it is, is having worked for the same institution for eight years is it gives me, full, I think, more flexibility in how I'm able to advocate for students in the process um, that maybe wouldn't have otherwise because we had to consider testing for those students um, and it had to be roped into our full review. Um, I think it gives us a little more flexibility in some of those students that we're bringing to campus who wouldn't have otherwise um, made it through in the same way that they're doing now. Let's move on a little bit because I saw a question already pop in that's really hitting on uh, this, this next topic. Um, and I'm going to throw this to you, Morgan, to start us off. Um, so how does the review process differ or does it differ when a student does not submit testing? Um, are students with or without test scores reviewed in the same way? Um, and again, if we have different answers for our institutions, we'll jump in, but Morgan, go ahead. Yeah, great. And, and I think that's a, a great thing to know. I think with these questions, test optional is one thing, but how colleges approach that could be really different. And so at Wake Forest, when I think about the review process we have in place, it's exciting and it's easy to say that it really is the same. We look at a student's application who submitted tests compared to a student who hasn't committed a test or submitted a test in the same light. They have the same application. They're reviewed the same way. Um, we use a committee reading process. So every application gets read at least twice by two separate set of eyes. And so the nice thing is that we're not we're not differentiating. We're not saying that there's a different weight that goes in any of these areas. I think, um, again, going back to what Mark said, I love this idea of putting it on the students, saying it's their freedom. I think a huge thing I always talk about in our review process is at Wake, we want to support this idea of self-advocacy and how that's a two-way street and how students in the application process often have lots of different avenues or maybe even lots of different pieces of the puzzle that they can choose to share. And that's their way of self-advocating. So that might be, they, they want to submit a test score because that's what really, they know they're good at doing testing. They feel so, like that correlates with their GPA. It supports what we see. Um, other students might decide not, and that might mean they might pursue other resources like our optional short answer questions or signing up for an optional interview. And so just on our end then, if students are self-advocating in their own application process, on the review side, the advocacy goes to trust the student, to trust that they're sharing what they want us to know and they know themselves best. And so I think, and I guess this goes to something you said earlier, Zach, that um, I've been thinking about it today. I think with, with test optional, it's kind of like the, the Santa Claus movie with, with Tim Allen. Every student thinks there's like the hidden clause, you know, when Tim Allen's like, I'm not supposed to be Santa Claus and Bernard 
like takes the magnifying and zooms in on the card. I don't know if this, this reference is dating me a little bit, but that I think people think that's what it is with test optional. They think you say that, but I, I, I have to get, you know, negative 10 points, you know, in this review process, thinking that there's even a point system to begin with. And so I think it's just talking to students and revealing how do we review these? Because I, I think there's a disconnect between that. And so that's a long explanation, but you weren't expecting a Santa Claus reference this time of the year uh, to say that our review process is the same for non-submitters and submitters. Mark or David, any additions there? I feel like that can't be topped for many reasons. Yeah, and the Santa Claus, that's usually on my list uh, every year. Um, you know, if you oh, celebrate yeah. Christmas, that might be that might be one that uh, is always going to stick around, timeless. Um, Santa Claus three, though, not my favorite of the of the series. They went downhill. Um, all right. Well, why don't why don't we move on? Because I think we would echo some of those things and certainly uh, that covered so much, um, you, you know, and this was I'm kicking to you, David. Um, so regardless of, of even just the ability to be admitted, there are other things that institutions have sometimes used testing for. So will not having a test score negatively impact students ability to maybe be considered for scholarships or be admitted to an honors program? Yeah, I think that's a really great question because there are these kind of different factors for a lot of colleges that you maybe you apply to the college, but then you have to apply to a separate honors college scholarship process or, or even a certain major or, or college within the university. And I think so far, I think we've seen that at a lot more public institutions um, that, that you may be test optional for admissions, but to be a nursing major or to get a certain scholarship or to be in the honors college, you do have to submit a test score. And trying to also just kind of explain why I, I think that's happening and, and what we've kind of heard so far is that, you know, when all this went down and a lot of us went test optional at private schools, we just had to convince our board of trustees or our chancellor to say, we wanna go test optional. But for a lot of public institutions, it's, it's actually law. It might be built in that, that a certain test score grants admissions for all in-state residents or for scholarships, that there's a law that you have to have a certain test score. So that's just a reason why, why you might find that. So I think at, at most institutions, test optional means test optional, that it doesn't matter what you're applying to or for the honors college. We think we can give a good idea of who you are as a student truly and, and what your capabilities are without that test score. Um, or at the very least that that is just a small part of, of who you are. But it is really worth, I think, asking when you're really interested in an institution, you know, is this gonna be a barrier for anything? You know, you might say you're test optional again for this application, but I wanna really be an engineering major. Does that, should I submit one for that major? So that's one thing that I think is important to kind of look at as you're in this search process, because we know that can be a little different place to place. But, but I know at, at TCU and a lot of other institutions, optional means optional for everything. And by the way, if we want to have a separate panel on Christmas movies, I'm, I'm on board for that. I'm saying I want to sign up for that. That's a good idea. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I think, you know, everything you said is great and, and correct. And, you know, the onus unfortunately falls to students that, you know, you're going to be looking at different institutions. And, you know, we know that even this past year, many still required it, but there, there's other bigger bureaucratic wheels. You know, if you're interested in a ROTC scholarship, for example, um, you're required to have, have standardized, at least for now, I haven't heard of any change there. So um, unfortunately, you need to be preparing yourself for, you know, either applying to maybe one school early and then you're done or possibly a broader set. So the great news is, is that it is very early in the process. You have plenty of time. Um, so do a little bit of homework now and over the summer and you'll be set up well with whatever pathways you choose. Absolutely. And I think, you know, we're, and maybe I designed it this way a little bit, but we're leading kind of into, I think, the, the next question, which, which I'm going to go ahead and, and take and kick us off, which is thinking, um, and I've seen some questions come in about this already, which is, you know, what advice do you have for students in choosing whether or not to submit a test score? 
Um, and that's often the, the first question I know as soon as we went test optional is, you know, what's the cutoff? Where do, I, where do I not submit my test score? And that's not necessarily the way that you, I think, should be thinking about it. And I think Morgan hit on some of this as she was talking about you know, trust, trusting that we trust the student. And um, what we want and what I, I believe is that the application itself should allow you to determine how you want to be represented. And you know yourself, you know your capabilities better than anyone. So a couple different scenarios that I think I would, I would point to as we think to, to break this out, conversations you can have with others and with yourself internally as you think through what might make sense for you is, as Mark just said too, do your research. You have some time now. Um, uh, colleges are going to post the middle 50% of their test scores for admitted students generally. And so you've got the sense of where half of the students are following, uh, following and obviously, you know, because it's the middle 50%, you know where 75% of their students are falling, They're, you know, uh, in terms of where those test scores are. And so first question is, you know, if you're falling within um, or above that middle 50%, you know, you, you're, you're obviously fitting into that, that piece that colleges are looking at. You know, from my perspective, when students are, are showing that uh, level of ability on a test score, you know, I, I'm not questioning your test score anymore. I'm looking at all those other factors that are part of the holistic admissions process. So it's, that doesn't become a big question mark. So um, when I hear students that have like scores at the top end or middle 50% say, should I be test optional? I'm thinking your test score is not the thing that's going to be why you get in or don't get into this institution. Um, so, so do your research and kind of see where you sit in that regard. Second, you know, and we haven't hit much on the, on the transcript yet, but remember when you don't submit a test score, we're going to be leaning on the on the transcript in terms of, of your of your ability, um, and we consider transcripts in the context of what's available to you. How did you take advantage of it, and ultimately, how did you perform? And again, you know yourself, you know your transcript, you know your school, and as admissions officers, it's our job to to, to get a sense of that as we're doing the review process. And so, if you know you've taken some rigorous courses, challenge yourself that you've performed pretty well, and you feel your transcript is a strong indicator of your ability but you don't feel necessarily that way about your testing or, 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 or whatever the case may be, you're not satisfied with your score, you can let your transcript speak for itself. That's what test optional is designed to do in terms of, uh, of how we can review that. And you already heard us talk about how the review process is, is similar and how we have it set up. Um, at the same time, if you find that there's an area of your transcript that, you know, whether it's a blemish or an issue or something like that, um, we're not transcript optional. Like that's still a piece that we're always gonna be requiring. Um, at least as far as far as I know, that'll be that'll be the day if that ever becomes an optional piece. But um, test, um, but you, but for some students, it can help them to for the test score and the transcript to work together in demonstrating um, your ability and kind of a, a you know baseline of of ability. Or you did really well in a section of testing, and for whatever reason you had a, a tough grade or something like that. So there are ways that those things can work together. So those are a few scenarios to think through. It, there's not a single answer that covers everyone. You need to decide um, based on what you've done and, and, and taking any tests, um, what you think your test score represents and whether or not you want that included in the admissions process. But would anybody else like to, to jump in to add any other pieces of advice they might share with students when they ask this question? I think the only other thing I was going to say, because I see a question here, oh, I should do. Well, I guess maybe I'll do answer live. But anyway, the, the question is about, you know, this idea of tiebreakers. Again, I know none of us are, are, are new to this question of, okay, hypothetically, though, you have two students who are the exact same holistically, and there's a test score. The easy answer, there is no such thing. There is no such thing as two students that are exactly the same. Um, because of this holistic process, again, uh, how colleges have things set up you know, what students are writing in their short answers, in their, in their essays, even outreach, that self-advocacy, you might not get a chance to visit campus. I know nobody did this past year, um, but they might be, you know, reaching out with the campus, talking about their interests. So again, the, if a school is test optional, know that this tiebreaker idea, it doesn't, that's not really how admissions officers approach that oftentimes, because holistic it just encount it encompasses so many things. I know I'm struggling to articulate this, and someone might be able to say it better. But that's kind of hopefully helpful to uh, who asked that question. So don't think it like a tiebreaker, but think of it as a piece of the puzzle that you feel like. But if it further supports you, if it's if it's trying to be this a part of the story that you're telling us, then send it. But if you aren't proud of it, and if it doesn't make sense, then then don't, and that won't hurt you in the process. 
Fantastic. And Mark, I saw you leave and come back. You all set? <laughs> okay. Well, um, so let's let's move along then. And and I think we alluded to this a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna kick it to Mark to, to handle this question. But essentially, um, should students still be signing up for and trying to take the ACT or SAT? And then with that, what about other exams, AP or IB exams, if schools do offer them? Oh, did he freeze? I think so. I think so. Well, I, I'm happy to jump in on. Oh on wait, part of the I hear, can hear you now. This is this is the fun of the Zoom era, right? Can you all hear me okay now? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I heard you moving, but not. Uh, I saw you moving, but not. I couldn't hear you. Anyway, I'm back. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> Okay, so I have the question fortunately written out, so I can jump in. Apologies if I jump off. So, so yeah, should you still sign up for it? And, and this is a great question. And you know, it's really going to be student specific here. I think as you are doing your research, the best uh, answer to this question is is to do as much homework ahead of time. If you know for a fact that a, a school that's high on your list still requires it, and you have the opportunity to take it, then we would strongly encourage you to look at that. If you know that you're interested in the ROTC scholarship or any other programs that still lean on that and require it, you know, we would recommend it. Um, now, some schools have already been very proactive and said what their testing policies are gonna be for this upcoming year. And as you make your college list, again, work with your college counselors on that. If you've determined that every school on your list doesn't require it, and you know that testing is not your favorite thing to do, and you know that you're maybe not as strong of a tester as you are in, in every other aspect of an application, then, and, and really maybe only perhaps then should you say, I, I, I can forego this. But we understand that there are a lot of factors here. There's, there's access, there's cost, um, you know, so make the decision for best you, that best fits where you are and what you're hoping for out of the college process. But the more homework you can do now, those earlier conversations with your college counselor, talk to your teacher, if you know uh, older, you know, classmates in your school or friends of yours and they've gone through this process if you want to talk to them as, as well, but also reach out to colleges. Um, I know it can be not often the most fun task in the world to call an office full of strangers, um, but we're here and we have phone lines and we have emails. We're always eager to ans answer these questions as well. So as you are able to do some hard work now and, and make an earlier determination, I think most often the case is that if you take it uh, and you decide ultimately not to use it, well, you have it. And it, it's in the back, and you can choose to use it and, and choose to report it at some later point. But if you don't take it now, and then you find later that a school you really want to go to requires it or a scholarship program requires it, and you don't have it, unfortunately, you could be out of luck. So you got plenty of time, I assure you. We just re released decisions yesterday. So there is plenty of time between now and then. So talk to your counselors, talk to your teachers, use some college resources, reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, but, but again, it should be that individual determination. Yeah, that makes, it's perfect, of course. And I, I'll just throw in a, my own personal anecdote. There's this college I, that I, maybe I had a great time in my college experience, but I didn't end up applying to a school because they required the writing portion of an exam. And I sat for the test twice without, without taking it. And then realized, so I did not do my research ahead of time. Um, but I ended up at the University of Chicago, as you can tell by by all the maroon behind me. Um, but that's that's my own that's my own personal journey. Um, so you know, one of the things, and and I and we can maybe scroll through and see what questions we can get to here. But I, I kind of wanted to end on um, maybe being a little bit more philosophical and thinking through, uh, um, you know, kind of the out, outlook here. I think we hit on some of this because we know we're all all four of us are going going test optional uh, or going to remain test optional, um, but does anybody have any any other thoughts on kind of where things things might go or what other things are kind of out there in the news as we think about test optional that, you know, kind of the end all be all final thoughts before we maybe turn to the Q&A box. I would just hope that in the future that this starts to take some pressure off the testing environment because I think that's that's one thing we all want to get away from is this feeling that if you don't get a 36 on your ACT, you're not going to get into these four colleges, um, which I'm sure all of us have admitted people who don't have 36s. Um, so taking some of this pressure off that that's the most important thing, this one test that I have to take, when in fact, if you took some of those study hours and, and turn them into studying for classes or 
joining a new club or, or finding a new, new, you know, passion or something like that, or even just sleeping a little bit more, that's probably in the long run going to be a lot better for you. So n releasing some of the pressure and releasing some of the inequities that, that the testing environment really, really takes on, I think. So don't put so much pressure on yourself. To, this is like a well-being message i feel like like take care of yourself go to go to go to sleep um yeah david I, I love that yeah make a go go binge something for a little bit on tv just for you know you deserve it um but yeah i completely agree i mean especially thinking of being a high school student in rural south dakota and then talking to you know current students right now and or who are applying and talking to current students at wake right now the this I hope that this conversation about test optional transitions into the way we talk about college search and finding a college that's the right fit for you. I mean, I think that's the that's the that big thing that I think we we always need to to break down and and making this the educational high school experience and that transition to col college one that isn't as competitive and toxic, but is really a place where students feel like they can grow and make mistakes and fail and that they can still come out the other end of that. Um, but that's a, maybe that's a little too philosophical for, for tonight. So I'll leave it there. So I wanted to jump in only because I saw a question in the, in the chat about this too. And something that we, this, this panel is not necessarily designed to address and none of our institutions have this policy, but the question came up of what's the difference between test optional and test blind. Um, and, and test optional, as we've been discussing, is that you can choose to submit your test or not, and our review process allows us to review students who submit a test or not, whereas test blind is where an institution, even if you want your test scores uh, included, is not going to consider the test score. So that no students, the, it puts students on that same playing field of nobody has a test score included. Um, you can argue the benefits and, 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 and um, pros and cons of, of what that might mean for an institution. I know, I think, at least for now, where we are as an institution, we appreciate that students have the choice in how they represent themselves. Um, because for some students, the test score is something that uh, if they perform well, they know themselves, like they want that included. Uh, uh, they're proud of it, that sort of, that, that sort of thing um, that exists. Um, but again, something to be aware of. I don't know if that's going to grow as quickly, but um, there are a handful of institutions, and, and I think some even ones adding it now, um, that uh, regardless of how you do on the test, if you want to go to that school, they're not gonna consider it in the process. So that's what test blind is. I wanna make sure I at least define that for the question being asked. We, we tried it with our honors college this year, which was really interesting. So with the honors college, they we just didn't give them test scores and they actually didn't notice um, had pretty much the same results. So we, we were kind of excited that's a small sample size and those are students who are self-selecting applying to an honors college. So they're usually pretty good students anyway, um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Fun little experiment. College admissions is, is kind of a funny game. Um, you know, it, it's not a science by any stretch of the imagination, but I think back when to when I was applying, you know, many years ago and, and they decided to add the third section to the SAT and that was this whole new thing. And, now that didn't last too long, but th there's just been a lot of experimentation over the decades. And I don't think we're done with this experimentation. I think at the end of the day, the onus really does fall to the colleges. You know, it's for us to figure out a lot of these things. Um, so you focus on being a high school student, being, uh, you know, a contributor, being a friend, being a classmate, uh, being a kid. And um, a lot of it is for us to figure out. So I see a question here in the the q and I, I think we might have asked, asked it earlier, but I don't know if we actually went into it regarding AP testing um, and IVs and all of that. And so um, th there's a common theme tonight, ask the college, you know, do your research because every college is different, but this is a great example of where colleges are, are really different. I know at, at Wake when, um, when we talk about AP testing, IB testing, um, that's something, again, you, you can choose to share. It's a piece of the puzzle to get to know you better. But I think more of the catalyst for students wanting to take IB or AP uh, tests or IB tests is to get credits that you know transfer over. So that's really, that's why you might want to do AP or IB testing 
Um, some colleges will just take those and it, it's an easier process. I know at Wake, it's department dependent. So we don't have an honors college. We have honors, you can graduate with honors within programs. And so everything is department dependent. And so that doesn't mean that just because you have a you know, five on AP Calc that that's gonna take out your, Sam, I'm so bad at this, it's been so long since I've had to do this myself. It, it's, I just let the departments figure it out. But that's to say, if you're someone who's wanting to bring your credits with you, ask how that will work for you when you go to colleges. Um, we, this is not a part of the question, but also, you know, college credits, if you're taking college credits, will those transfer? That might just determine you to apply somewhere and maybe not to apply to another college. So again, reach out. These are, these are questions that we are happy to direct you to on the website or just to, to share more about what that means. But that was a question that was on here. So thanks whoever asked it. Perfect. And actually, I think we're, we're pretty much coming up to, to the end of our, of our time tonight. Um, and so I just want to make sure I, I give everyone an extra thank you. Um, thank you to our panelists uh, for, for joining in to talk about this topic. And I think you will hopefully see that, uh, you know, because many of us are representing our institutions in the state of Colorado. So you'll see us back, you know, visiting schools and at college fairs. And we're available via via email, and you can call us. And, and there are ways for for you to make sure that your questions are answered, and you're not um, going online to disreputable sources to find answers to questions that um, that we we know are, are not always the, the best place to get information. So ask us. Um, good luck in your process, uh, wherever you might be in that, and, and you're doing your search and, and being prepared for that. We all wish you the best of luck. No matter what, you're going to find the right college home for you, and you're going to find how you want to represent yourself on your application, because that's what we've been talking about tonight. And as I said at the beginning, test optional really means test optional. Take our word for it and choose what you want to do. Um, I'm going to bring Sarah back on to close us out. Yeah, thank you so much. I think I can speak on behalf of the audience members to say thank you to our panelists for your time and expertise tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, now we're going to have a quick 10 minute break. Um, if you still haven't chosen a session two, you can visit, I just put it in the chat, uh, you can visit the event webpage and choose a second panel. And then remember that from 730 to eight, we will have our um, wonderful reps in their Zoom meeting rooms um, where you can pop in and ask specific questions about their schools. So that should be really great. And that session is for students only. So um, that those will also be on that, that strivescan.com slash CO 2021 um, webpage later on. All right. Thank you so much and have a great night, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. See y'all.